Yo, what's up? We are now at Ayunti Dal, and behind me here I have Volkswagen ID4 first edition. This is the base trim level, and we're going to do range test with it. We just finished charging 100%. As you heard, this is going to be a quick intro. Uh, I want to show you the, the wheels. I have checked the tire pressure when they were cold. It's supposed to be 2.5. Let me just show you here. It's supposed to be 2.5 bars front and back. I have double checked. They are. I adjusted them so they are 2.5 bars. We have a Hancock Ventus S1 Evo 3. Yeah, I've seen them before. Uh, staggered option, staggered setup here. We have 235 50 20 front, 255 45 20 in the back, summer tires. So, um, yeah, we charge 100%. Uh, I'm going to do final preparation. I'm going to show you guys some stuff. So here we have OBD dongle is down there. We have, okay, we have to hurry because we just finished charging and it's actually discharging the battery a little bit here. So it just have 500 watts, so it doesn't matter too much, but yeah, it claims 100%. So it's pulling a little bit. Um, we have 100% here also. And then we're gonna drive the normal route. So off we go, yeah, it's pulling 400. Yeah, okay, let's go, let's go. All right, we are on the move. And as usual, we have to check against the GPS and 93 kilometers per hour is the speed. So right now, EV notify here, you see there's nothing much going on. We're down to 97%, batteries are whatever, yeah. But um, the consumption so far, well, we have gone downhill. I don't know about the, I don't remember the, uh, we, we have tailwind, yes, I remember that. We have slight tailwind and uh, downhill and the consumption is 169. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's pretty good. At least uh, maybe we can get around 175 to 180 consumption, which is gonna be awesome. So now we will check the weight. I have checked the weight before with, uh, with a plus, I mean the max, and it was uh, minus the cargo, it was 2,260 kilos. So let's see, with driver, yeah, so let's see now. So 2,200, okay, yeah, we're gonna check it out. All right, here you go. Uh, this is a lighter car without the glass roof, without motorized uh, uh, seat and without the head-up display so I, I my guess is that this car weighs 2160 kilos let's see with with 75 kilo driver front axle 1040 all right the whole car oh 2220 so it's only 40 kilos lighter than the, the top trim. Wow, I missed it by, I thought it was 80 kilos less. It's 40 kilos less. All right, now we know. It actually means that the, the, the panorama roof on this one doesn't, I mean the glass roof on the top trim is not that heavy. Maybe just 20 kilos extra or 30 kilos extra. All right, let's check out Mjösen now. Okay, as always, let's check the windsock to get the, yeah, you see, we have tailwind, but very gentle tailwind. I think that's one, is that uh, one circle is one knot or two knots or something. And then I check Mjösen. It's very calm in Mjösen, but it means that we have tailwind. And it means that we have to expect um, slightly uh, lower consumption on the way north. Now, let me overtake this uh, truck. And you see, yeah, here we're going to confirm the windsock here. Oh, side wind that way, what? Okay, whatever. Yeah, all right, let's go. We are now at Rutshögda. As, as always, we will turn around here because beyond this point, we will then end up at some slow speed and some weird turnaround stuff. So we always turn around here. And then the, um, the distance is supposed to be, uh, let me see. Yeah, 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 it's supposed to be 91 kilometer around the roundabout here. Oh, it's 91. Hey, that means that the numbers here are very accurate. I think we can say that it's 100%. I mean, it's, it's, there is no error. And look at that consumption, 161. <laughs> okay, we have to see once we go back to uh, Dahl. Yeah, but this is looking really good. Uh, but over here, you see it's slightly colder, 14.5 degrees Celsius. And also, yeah, towards the end of the test, it will also be slightly colder. But okay, now we go back. Yes. We are now back at the starting point. And uh, 
we have, uh, if you see here, we have 62% left, all right? The temperature outside is 14.5 uh, degrees Celsius. And uh, the consumption, to my big surprise, is 165 watt hour per kilometer. And you see that the distance, okay, the distance is not too accurate here, but if we switch here, you see that it's 100, yeah, yeah, so it's 182. So the distance is actually spot on. Actually, according to Google, which I don't know if you can trust 100%, the distance around here is supposed to be 182.2, yeah. 182.2 so it means that the distance here is 100% correct the numbers we see here is also 100% correct and the consumption so all right now we uh let me see 62 we have a oh, holy shit that took that took two hours we have to do another loop to brumundal i mean all the way to rutshugdan back again <laughs> one more loop two more hours go we are now getting close to uh, Hamar, and if you look here, well, oh, it's dropping fast now, but you see that, wait, how did it, uh, there, no, what the heck? I'm trying to set ND filter, there, 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 no, what the heck? Okay, whatever, whatever. Um, you see that we are down to 49, around 50%. It's a little bit de delayed, but um, if you look at here, we draw about two, it, we, it was 240 kilometers when we uh, passed, the 50% mark and it was 162 watt hour per kilometer so based on the numbers so far it seems like we have 77.8 kilowatt hour but you know there could be roundoff error or it could be it could be that the the, the state of charge scale is not 100% linear but uh, this is looking really good so we have to see in the end the closer to zero we go the more accurate number we get so right now it is um, 14.5 degrees Celsius here. I noticed that uh, the further north we go, the colder it is. So around Hamar, Brummendal is Rutshögda, it's only 13 degrees. And then around Nebenes, it's 16 degrees. So uh, uh, last weekend, we turned the clock one hour forward. You see it's now 18, 15. It, it's supposed to be 17, 15. So we will actually have another two three hours of daylight so which means that by the time we finish the test then we, it will still not be pitch dark <laughs> oh man i can't wait for spring and summer summer to come because i'm so fed up with winter i've been going to what was that i go i went to foldal four or five times i went to i did those extreme cold weather testing i feel like i'm done with that for today i mean for this year <laughs> Now we just have to wait for the spring. We are now back at Dal for the second time. So we've done two full loops now to Dal. And right now we have 20% battery left, but this one is not updated that frequent. So it could be 19%, we don't know, but around 20%. And the consumption has gone up a little bit. It was 165 in the previous run. It has not gone up to 166, probably because the temperature went up a little bit. But that's still damn good for such a big car, uh, a heavy car. So um, so let's see, 363. Yeah, you see, th that's the funny thing, because I've seen this before. In the beginning, it could look like we can go 480 kilometers or something, or 470 maybe. Uh, but now, towards the end, it seems like yeah, we have 88 kilometers and gone. So right now, it could seem like we can go 450 maybe. And it seems, I've seen this before that when we have more higher battery state or charge, it looks like we can go far, farther, but towards the end, it seems like the, the percentage here drops faster. And that could indicate that maybe um, the ID3 is measuring energy or measuring percentage similar to uh, to the Korean cars, like E-Niro, Kona, whatever, which means that they count watt hour. Um, and when you count watt hour, I mean, the real energy is watt hour multiplied by uh, volt. And then because the voltage drops towards the end, then it drops faster. But that's just a theory. I don't know for sure. No. Now let's just drive a little bit more before we finish. Yeah, about, uh, I don't know, 60, 70 more kilometers. Yeah, I don't know how deep I'm gonna go, we'll see.
we are now almost done and interesting observation okay let me show you here well actually we don't okay i'm going to show you here that we have five percent left and interesting towards the end like i've seen in other cars is that the temperature on the pack starts going up a little bit well or that's weird yeah i think this is this was incorrect but we have about 20 to 22 degrees in the pack um the interesting part is that if you look here we have five percent left and gom claims 22 kilometers left and if you add that to the distance it would be 450 but earlier but like when we had 50% or something, it could look like we had we could go 480. And I've seen this before. I experienced this before with the ID3, which is that, yeah, it seems like towards the end, <laughs> the percentage drops faster, and you actually uh, you have less range than you initially thought you had, something like that. But I think 5%, 21. Oh shit! Should we go for it or uh, 21? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna go to Hervisat and back again. I can always, yeah, yeah, I think we should be safe. So we're gonna go another loop now, as, as a 15 kilometer loop, and then we should end up at Dahl with 2% left. <sighs> we are finally back at Ionity. That run took over five hours. I don't know what was the most impressive thing, and me driving five hours without stopping and peeing, or the car uh, seems to have about the 450 kilometers of range. Very good. That is very close to the VLTP range. But okay, now we're charging up and we're going to charge 100% and then do the high speed test at night. We need, we need to test how much, I mean, how much <coughs> loss or how, how low internal resistance this car has. I, I believe it has pretty low internal resistance. But anyway, I haven't had this big Mexican for a long time. It's always a little bit overexposed, but it's, um, well, they call it Mexican, but it's just a taco salad, Norwegian style taco salad with some rice, beans, some uh, salad. And here we have guac holy guacamole and some sour cream. I actually prefer less sour cream and more salsa. I love salsa. Let's try that. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. I love this salad, man. Yeah. Mm. We are now on the move and uh, yeah, it's, getting, it's dark now, it's 10 at night. So if you look here, the stats so far, well, I have to adjust it a little bit, yeah. Actually, what I usually do is that I go here and then you see it's too bright at night, I just turn it all the way down. And now we see it better. So it, yeah, so it doesn't disturb my night vision. So it's 10 at night, oh it's plus 9.5 degrees Celsius, that's actually not too bad, yeah, it could be 5, you know, it could be worse, but the consumption needs to stabilize, hmm, okay, okay, but at least we have no traffic, no left lane huggers, and uh, we will see then, alright, we're getting, uh, I don't know, we're almost halfway now, we have 55%, uh, Consumption is now 248 because we're going back. But let, let me show you guys. High beam. This is non-adaptive stuff. Wax on. Wax off. Wax on. Wax off. Wax on. Wax off. I have to say, wax off. It's 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 nice spread and powerful. It's just that it is not adaptive. Huh. Okay. Okay. I need to test this this non-adaptive light on my regular test range. See how good they are. Yeah. Alright, we have now do, done a full cycle all the way to Rutsugda uh, and back again. Let me see. Alright. Okay. So see here now. Let's check it out. Okay, no cars here. Alright. So the stats so far is that it is 11-ish at night and um, based, on my based on my calculations right now, we have uh, 295 to 300 kilometers of range and the consumption at night, you see it's 8.5, some places it's actually 10, 11 degrees, so it's a, it's a fairly warm night and the consumption is 250 and I have calculated beforehand that we have 75 kilowatt hour, so yeah, we'll see. Now let's do uh, another run, but a shorter one, yeah. Uh, we're finally 
back at Ayonte. It's getting late now. It's half an hour past midnight. But okay, let's look at the numbers this time. We just take all the numbers in one go. So when we did the low the low speed run, it was um, yeah. You see the stats, and I ended up with one percent. <laughs> kind of yeah, not too dangerous now that uh, it's not too hot. That, I mean, it's hot outside, so. So the battery didn't really go that cold and then we didn't have turtle mode. But okay, so I estimated that we have 449 kilometers of range. And if I remember correctly, uh, this trim here is supposed to have 485 or something. Or something, yeah, close to 500, 480 something if I remember correctly. And that means that it's not that far off the VLTP range. So of course, it's just 15 degrees Celsius today. So maybe if we try a day with 25, then we will have maybe 470, 480 kilometers range. So that's pretty good. Yeah, good range. 400 kilometers range. I had to drive five hours before I stopped. Uh, and then I calculated that at that speed, that consumption, it was 75 kilowatt hour total. So that's actually pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but okay, but also I have to point out that the consumption was 167 watt hour per kilometer and that's actually very good for such a large car. I mean, it has a CD value of 0.28, but the MEB platform seems to be very efficient. So anyway, and a high speed test, okay, I managed to drive 290 kilometers and the consumption was 251, um, which is uh, actually not too bad. I think it actually beat, yeah, it beat EQC and also beat e-tron. But uh, it didn't beat um, Polestar, but then Polestar is really way smaller. So I keep comparing this with EQ. No, I keep comparing this one with um, with uh, e-tron because I think size-wise it's similar. And then people who are looking to buy e-tron, they might also consider a cheaper car like the ID3. But then this time at the high speed test, you see that um, um, I estimated 74.6 kilowatt hour. So the, with a slightly higher, I mean with a higher, actually significantly a higher consumption, you only get slightly less energy out or less energy heat loss. So this indicates that the battery has low internal resistance. I don't know how they design it, you know, if it's a prismatic, I don't know if this is a prismatic cell or the other type of cell. Um, but uh, it seems like uh, low internal resistance and that's prob probably what we see now when we are charging it. And supposedly I heard rumors that uh, well, ma it's maximum 250 kilowatt, now, 100, 125 kilowatt now, but uh, Volkswagen, they're going to bump it up to 170 kilowatt and that's only 2C, so no big deal really at low state of charge. So yeah, uh, interesting, uh, overall nice car to drive and this is the base model and I feel like the base model here is not really, I mean, it's not really lacking that much. Like, I don't care about the panorama roof, I'm gonna have a separate video about this but just as for the many many people ask me, hey this one is not double glazed window, is it a problem? No, I don't feel like this is a problem. The only thing I'm missing is that it doesn't have the travel assist package with the auto steer it's just ping pong if you let go or if you don't steer too carefully it will just go in the ditch or whatever you know so i i'd like to get the travel assist that one is important for me all the other stuff doesn't matter that much so yeah i think that's gonna be it for now i hope you guys enjoy this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later